A mythical man has stepped forward and said that the Switch will last seven years. Now that may seem like a bold proclamation, but this man carries a lot of weight because Atsushi Hosokawa is the head of Media Create, a very prominent Japanese company that tracks the sales and estimates the future shipments and success rates for major companies. Now, he has not given an interview in nearly 10 years, but he stepped forth on the mountaintop to proclaim that the Switch will have a fantastic year this year, surpassing the 17 million unit target that has been predicted after some shrinking expectations, and also believing that the Switch will last seven long years years. That is a long time, Zach. And speaking of long times, I like to think that this man just like had a vow of silence and he didn't utter a single word in a decade until he had something to say about Nintendo. <laughs> he was just waiting for that fateful Mario day where the plumber reigned supreme once again and he was ready to come forth and announce his predictions. Again, Media Create, they do a lot of good work. I mean, uh, Hosokawa himself says that their data doesn't fail. It doesn't fail, and you know the, the specifics of a lot of analysts believing that ooh, Nintendo won't really start pushing aggressively unit-wise until next year, and that's where things will start to get really, really grand. And, and he's coming out and saying Media Create believes it'll be this year actually, once fiscal begins, that they're going to start doing exceptional again. The thing I want to focus on though is this seven-year life cycle and what we would need and what we would want for the Switch to last that long. If you have specific takes on what you need or how you feel about the Switch lasting seven years, definitely let us know in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video. It does help us out a lot. Gabe, if we look at Nintendo's history, seven years is pretty solid. And it's even more solid if you consider uh, recent times. We know the Wii U lasted about four and a half, four-ish years, and not all of those were even great years. The Wii, had a six-year life cycle. The GameCube went about five. The N64, similarly five. It's interesting to note though, Gabe, if we look on the handheld side, did you know that the Game Boy Color really only had about a three-year console cycle and the Game Boy Advance also had about a three-year console cycle? That's kind of crazy to me. I remember like those things being like mainstays of, of my gaming life back then. But yeah, I mean, now that you're telling me that they were around for that long, like I mean, we can't argue with the facts. Those are facts. So it felt like longer to me. I will say that. Absolutely. The 3DS has been going for about eight years now. So that is kind of the, I guess, the most the closest analogy in terms of time. And we're about to enter a new gen for PS5 and, and Xbox 2, Scarlet, Anaconda, whatever you want to call it. It's so crazy to think that this man and media create expect the Switch to extend four years beyond those supposed 2020 launches. This would be putting the Switch out to pasture in 2024. <laughs> now, it might not be the Switch that we have right now, and I think that's where this conversation goes of, if they're gonna last seven years, they're gonna have to make some improvements. Yeah, I don't think that the current hardware, like as it stands today, could last till 2024. There needs to be some iteration. Even with the 3DS, there's been a lot of iteration from where that began to where it's at now. And I feel like, yeah, it's impossible to go seven years with no changes in hardware whatsoever. There is only so long that people will continue to buy this thing for $300. I feel like a price drop, again, if it stays as is now, would be like super important. And right around like year three or four, just historically when like price drops start to happen, I, Nintendo refuses for now. And they have no reason to because it's selling really well. But yeah, I wanna ask you like, what do you think about that, right? We've heard Switch Pro, we've heard Switch Mini. Which one of those two will it take for them to make it seven years in your opinion? I mean, for me, it would be the Switch Pro, but Nintendo's history and the recent rumors, which, by the way, have kind of subsided. It feels like that, that has kind of gone underground for a bit. I don't know if it, if it reemerges around E3 time, but as of right now, it's like that's kind of gone dark. I think their philosophy and their track will be smaller, lighter, cheaper, and maybe even digital only. Because if we look to 2024, man, like how... How much better will streaming services be? How much better will, will internet be? And how less of an emphasis will there be on physical media? I feel like them prepping the waters for a even more portable or even more digital switch fits 
the the trends of you know the technology industry and also fits what Nintendo has done as you mentioned with the 3DS of going new 3DS of going 2DS but at the same time for me I, I want this thing to improve not just battery life or ergonomics but I want it to improve hardware wise if this is going to be the Nintendo device that we have until four years into the PS5 life cycle. Yeah, those things are already going to do like 4K by default. And by those things, I mean PS5 and Xbox, whatever it ends up being called. So, you know, 720p uh, handheld and, and sometimes 1080p docked, sometimes not. That That's not going to cut it for people. So I feel like something does need to happen. In order for me to like, be really invested in switching year 7, they, they have to do some stuff there. But why don't we talk about games a little bit, right? Because we've seen all their major franchises on Switch already in some fashion. We have a yeah. Mario Kart port, but still, we have Mario Kart on here. We have the best Smash ever. We have Odyssey. We have Zelda. Everything has been on here. They need to do a lap or two with, with all of these franchises. Now, my dreams of a Splatoon 3 on Switch are pretty much going to be <laughs> all but certified, I guess, if this does end up staying alive for seven more years, because I don't think we go that long without a, a Splatoon not, sequel. Not seven more. It, it oh, would yeah, be seven total. More. So, yeah, five more. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, within five years, yes, we need a Splatoon 3. What games do you think they absolutely need to hit on, on like, releasing again in order for this to do so well because we know Pokemon's coming. That's in a solid couple consoles. But <laughs> do we maybe need another Pokemon game after that? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, first of all, the Switch being alive for seven years to me, I don't know that they then do a, a, a handheld successor in that time, especially if they're going to iterate on the Switch, which I think is an inevitability. I think they might even iterate twice. I think they might go smaller and cheaper. I think they might go pro later down the line. And if that's the case, I don't know that you have a need or a room for a true 3DS successor. Maybe, I guess that's a conversation for a different day. But in terms of games, there have been great trilogies that exist on a single platform. Nintendo doesn't do it as much because they... They take their time, they space things out, they want to achieve perfection, and as you mentioned, they do have a lot of major franchises, but getting three Pokemon games on this console, to me, is is totally okay. We we got that on the on the 3DS, right? So it makes sense that the Switch being the the only pillar, I guess, for the foreseeable future for Nintendo, that they will just continue to iterate. So having Splatoon 3. Heck yeah, I think Mario Kart 9 is a must. I think getting another Zelda is a must. I mean, I think, you, like you said, you will see a full lapping of almost all of these franchises, which is exciting, especially considering recent consoles, at least on the, on the home console front, for Nintendo have usually got one new entry per major franchise. Yeah, especially Zelda, right? Like, we don't get a lot of instances where like zelda is on the same platform a lot and you know i know ocarina majora like i, I get it but yeah i mean that's gonna be really really weird and it does make me wonder if it is like a breath of the wild sequel but yeah you're right the lapping of this but i, but I think we get i think we get both gabe i think we get a breath of the wild sequel and and i, I mean god that's five, five more years of this that's a lot of zelda especially if because because look if they decide that they are going to iterate and they are going to make a more powerful console wouldn't you want some some tentpole experiences to really highlight that let's say they do go light towards the end of this year and next year then they go heavy in say 2022 to give it that extra two-year jump and to try and make at least some amends with third-party developers that are going to shrink probably even more once we enter the next gen i, I feel like that honestly is going to be one of the most tense issues with this platform existing for seven years is how do third parties support this are they going to have to make separate games a la mario plus rabbits that that's good for us but do they want to support the system and will they they choose to invest their dollars in a way that allows them to have totally different software because like let's be real you know the, the new like final fantasy 16 or whatever probably going to look bonkers on ps5 and probably not going to run on switch yeah i mean and that's honestly always been a problem with switch yeah like there's been good third-party support yeah but it hasn't been great 
you know, big games continue to come out on other platforms that are not coming to Switch. We're not going to get The Division. We're not going to get Anthem. And, you know, maybe those aren't the best examples of good games. Uh, Resident Evil Or Anthem 2 or yeah. The Division 3. Yeah, no, none of that stuff is happening on Switch. So I, I guess it does just end up being on companies like Ubisoft to just put out exclusive content. And I almost prefer it that way, honestly. I don't want an ugly looking Anthem when I can go play Anthem on PS4 or PC. Here's what's really exciting to me. If we, if we talk games... The best games come out usually in the Twilight final years. years. Yeah, the Twilight yeah. years. And if Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild are so freaking good, what is to say that the next, and maybe even the next next, aren't better? And that the insane quality that we've experienced here on Switch thus far is only the beginning. And, and maybe, maybe they just hit home runs, and so this will be the glory days, and it'll actually be a backwards generation where we actually feel sad by the end. Like, man, Breath of the Wild was so much better than, uh, you know, Zelda's Grand Theme Park Adventure or whatever they come out with. But I, I do have, like, this little, little chill inside that says, man, like, if this is just getting going, if this is just revving up, if this is just the beginning, that's super awesome. I do feel, Gabe, though, that online is going to need a significant expansion and improvement for this thing to to push into a seven-year life cycle. There is no way in my mind that the current NSO can last with what it offers, bare-bones NES offerings, you know, online that's kind of shaky. Like, they're going to have to double down, right? Yes and no, right? Because the key here, and we always say this, is that it's so cheap that it, like it almost doesn't matter. It's $20 for a year, and without that, you can't play Smash Online. You can't play Mario Kart Online. Like, that alone is just reason enough for people to do it. Yeah, we want, you know, the NES games, no one cares. Or I don't want to say no one, but no one by you and I. We don't care. And there are a lot of other people that it does nothing for. So, yes, we want other libraries. Yes, we want better value of some kind that Nintendo keeps saying they're going to bring. But... I mean, it hasn't taken form in any way, but for me at least, with that price so low, if I just gotta pay that to play Smash Online, I'm gonna suck it up, and I feel like a lot of other people are as well. Improvements would obviously be great, but I'm not counting on it. You just don't think by the time that PS5 is fully in swing and they have their, you know, stellar online Xbox with Game Pass and what they're doing with their cloud services seems to be investing so heavily I just wonder at what point, and, and this is the case with a lot of Nintendo console generations, like, when does it start to feel like, okay, like, right now, Switch is still, like, king of advancement, right? It doesn't have the best graphics, it doesn't have the best, you know, processor, but it does have the best idea. The longer this goes, the more that idea wears out. I mean, I mean, does it, though? I I'm gonna stop myself in my own tracks. Does the idea wear out? Or if Xbox and, and PlayStation continue to just keep status quo of pushing power, power, power. Is, is there a chance that without a handheld successor from any of the major companies, the Switch just maintains its, like, beautiful, interesting, compelling status without needing a whole lot? For, for me, I, someone is always going to want to play handheld. I, I'm going to always want to play handheld in some fashion. Like, I, I think that, I mean, we, we're going to call it a gimmick, even though it's not a gimmick. Like, that gimmick is strong enough. Just playing on the go is strong enough. With real controls, by the way, because yes, you can play on your phone and stuff like that. But there's always going to be millions of people that want to experience gaming that way that I think Switch is going to be okay no matter what PS5 do, no matter uh, does, no matter what Xbox does. So I think that's okay. I don't, I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I, I, that just, like, dawned on me, and it, it's kind of an awkward take to embrace. But if there is no other handheld like gamers device as you mentioned phones will continue to evolve and continue to do their thing but the switch then will be a one-of-a-kind product that excels because of what it inherently is more so than oh how it's advanced and i still think that it would behoove them greatly to <laughs> to iterate and create a more powerful switch just because at a, at a certain point people's eyes will grow tired of like you said 720p and how things look but maybe they have just, like, won the lottery with how things, how the dominoes have fallen, how the cards have, have dropped, and, and they are in a sweet spot where 
Yes, they can make some, some little area of changes. Yes, they can try and court third parties for exclusive experiences that best suit their console. Maybe they can bring in virtual consoles. I mean, hey, maybe, maybe the reason it's taking so long, Gabe, is because they do have this seven-year plan. It's like, okay, first two years is NES, then we bring in SNES, and they're just going to drip feed us uh, like the nostalgic fans we are. But perhaps this can last as long as they say. I mean, and that's... Uh, it's kind of exciting, I guess. Am I crazy in remembering that Nintendo said they wanted this thing to last for 10 years? Do you remember that? There was there was a comment about, you know, it, it could last for 10 years. Yeah, so, I mean, se seven years seems more feasible to me than 10. But, yeah, regardless, Nintendo has a lot of work to do if they are going to want this to be able to succeed for so long. You know, again, some of these franchises need to come back, so... It's a, I guess it's more on the software side, then. Yeah, it, yeah, it has that, to be. That, that's kind of our... Our feeling is, yes, a, a Switch Pro, a Switch Lite, those will probably happen because Nintendo does, but it's more just making sure that you keep consistent releases, consistent quality, and building upon that. And, and anything else, I guess, is kind of just gravy, right? If they are able to somehow give us an online service that is, like, comparable to other platforms and great, that's just a bonus. If they are able to deliver coveted themes with the coveted virtual console gravy if they are able to get a bunch of third parties but if they keep things going as they are now with quality software the only hybrid experience out there there's no reason they can't last for seven years and continue to have a strong successful push yeah i have 100 percent agree with you let us know your take in the comments down below media create says seven years what do they need to do to keep you engaged for seven years lapping around on game franchise innovating with new IP, or are you more in the line that, hey, they do need to make some significant hardware improvements, and they do need to really tidy up their online in order to keep you engaged, and then where the heck does Nintendo go once they reach 2024? That's just very, very interesting to think about, but right now, give us your take in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. There's a link in the description if you want to check out the full interview from Bloomberg. In the meantime, for myself and Gabe, a fantastic day, two of seven done, Gabe. Five more to go for myself and Gabe. Switch Force.